Where the fuck is it? Huh? Holy shit. No, but seriously, I'm back. I had some shit happen in my life that really put me in like this really, really, really negative mood. I didn't really want to work on cars. I just kind of wanted to focus on me and my family for a while. But I'm back. I'm feeling way better. My mindset is through the fucking roof. Picked up a few different hobbies aside from cars, which is nice because, you know, sometimes when you have the same hobby over and over, it can get frustrating when you plateau and you feel like you're not going anywhere with it. I haven't been inside my garage like with the intent of working in months. I think since the literal last video that I dropped was the last time that I stepped foot in here. So as you can see, everything is covered in spider webs. I gotta clean, 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 clean. Let me take care of that first and let me show you guys what exactly I have in store for the channel. I took a lot of that time off, educating myself on certain things that I didn't really know about before and I feel confident in now. So yeah, let's get some of this clutter taken care of. I'm not gonna do like a full deep dive clean. I'm just gonna get it a bit more comfortable to my taste to where I can at least move around freely, not have stuff in the way, and I could look at what exactly it is that I'm gonna work on. But anyways, I didn't get to clean as good as I would like to, but now that it's a bit more comfortable in here, I can go ahead and let you guys know basically what I have in store. So first and foremost, I know everybody wants me to finish the Celica. Trust me, I wanna finish the Celica, but that car and that project needs a bit more attention. I'm not just gonna swap in the 1UZ CD09, get the rear end in, throw some wheels on it and call it a day. I have big plans for wide body. Uh, I plan on supercharging it and a few other things down the road. It's one of those projects I'd rather just sit there and take my sweet ass time with it. Plus, I want it to come out perfect. But anyways, I have to, have to, I mean absolutely have to finish this car. I've had it for way too damn long just sitting here, it was a perfectly fine car. I could I could still be driving it front wheel drive right now. But I decided to have that stupid idea of converting it to rear wheel drive, and now I'm here. As a caveat to that, let's continue talking about the rear wheel drive conversion for this thing. So as you guys know, I already got a 4AGE with a T50 Trans fitted inside. So there's a few little things I'd like to do before I get too involved into this car, and that would be, one, making a plate that will go over this on both sides since the original cross member mounted up here. So if you guys are wondering why I didn't keep the stock cross member, it was simply because I couldn't use the A86 knuckles or spindles or anything else. The rack and pinion was mounted in the front and the design of the cross member was to where the rack and pinion sat inside of a girdle and in order to convert it, I'd have to cut it up, plate it, and it was gonna be just a lot more work than if I just than if I just got an OEM A86 cross member and fitted it in the same location. Since this car did come with the A-Series motor, I technically could have gotten away with that cross member and used it that way. Um, I know there's a dude in Puerto Rico who has a rear wheel drive converted Tercel, same year as mine, uh, but he kept it 4AC, um, carbureted, or it might be a 3T, I'm not too sure. But he also converted his car to rear wheel drive, he kept the front wheel drive cross member, he kept everything else from front wheel drive, removed the axles, installed an older Corona rear end, kept it leaf spring, threw in a drive shaft, made the most simple transmission tunnel that he could, and called it a day. But in my situation, I would much rather convert over to A86, especially for their aftermarket. With the Tercel, I would definitely have to be sourcing who can fabricate me this, that, or whatever I can fabricate. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. I've been accumulating a few of the things that I needed to finish this car up. I have a few parts that are still on the way, should be here within the next few days, maybe next few weeks. So what I have is a Dan ST Engineering intake manifold, nice little aluminum TIG welded piece. Then I got these Kian 47 millimeter bike carbs. These came off of a 2000 CX-7R. Um, the trumpets are Rubber, I will be replacing those with the Dan ST Engineering 50 millimeter ones. I do have a Piper Cross air filter and bracket on the way. Once that gets here, I will install it. I have these Mazda Miata NA rear coilovers. I bought the coilover set about a year back for another project, but it ended up not working out, so I had them sitting around. I've had these already for a while. Just some Bunk Boof 4AGE eBay headers. Nice little two row Honda Civic B16 radiator. For those of you that don't know, a Honda radiator fits just perfect on the original 3A. 
On the stock 3A that the Tercel had, I actually ran a D16 Z6 radiator. It kept my car at temp and that was with absolutely no fan helping it out. So I'm pretty sure this B16 one is gonna work just fine. Plus the hose routing is almost the same, which I also ordered the Dan ST silicon hoses. The brains of the operation, MSD 6AL2. This one's a 6421 for those that are wondering. Nice little set of NGK spark plug wires. I have a few other parts that are on the way, but half of them are coming from Japan and the other half are coming from London. So it's gonna be a nice wait, especially with COVID. So the 4AGE originally came with a carb setup. The original owner fabricated his own intake manifold and he fitted some Makunis on there, which don't get me wrong, the guy tried his best, but I just wanna do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the two. So side by side, you could already tell that these are just crafted way better. For one, this thing weighs like 30,000 pounds. This thing weighs like about a pound. Two, let's talk about these. Actually, let's not. You can't really see in there too much, but the flow gods are basically crying. This thing is a disaster. I think the best part about it is the fact that the flange basically fits perfectly and all of these runners fit this Makuni just right. So I mean, if you're looking at this as like some backyard mechanic type shit, it works, it works. I'll give it a six out of 10. Now let's look at these, my Lord. Starting off with that flange, the way the port flow is designed, those little inside radiuses at the bends and how smooth they are. The fact that it's a nice TIG welded aluminum part. The only thing that I fucked up on is I forgot to ask them for the individual vacuum ports, but that's fine. I don't really need vacuum with what I'm going to do anyway. Then we got the carbs. These are Makunis off of I don't know what type of bike. I don't know what year it's from. I just know they're Japanese. And they more than likely need a rebuild and a bit of love. Although, although the butterflies are base are pretty clean. So this might not be in bad shape, but regardless, I'm still gonna open it up, try to see if everything looks good, try to see if the bowl and float is all good, see if anything needs to get replaced, and I'll probably jet it for a different project that I have going on. Now let's talk about these. These are Kians off of a 2000 ZX7R, and they are refurbished, ready to go. They're still jetted for a bike though. So I do need to redo my jetting. I'm not too sure exactly what jet size I'm gonna run for now. So these are just to uh, look pretty for right now. But for the price that I got them at, 200 bucks, refurbished. They were tested, they still smell like gas. Like you can literally smell gas. Like someone just tested these maybe an hour before they put them in the box and sent them to me. So that's nice. Then let's talk about the MSD. I'm gonna run a 6AL2. The reason I wanna run a 6AL2 is I do not wanna run a crank position sensor. I don't wanna run that. I know I have the option of coils and being able to use a ECU to control my timing and everything. But I mean, this thing does the same thing. It's old school. It's the way that the old school guys used to do it. It's simple. All I have to basically do is connect my laptop to this while the engine's running, look at my timing, calibrate my timing map, set my rev limiter in two step, and it's good to go. And if anyone's interested in how I'm gonna run that, you basically get your stock distributor, lock it in full advance, all the way this way, and you plug it into that thing. Yeah, you set your distributor to max advance, then you go into that little MSD thing. Then from there, you set your timing through your RPM range, how you want it, how you wanna see it, get nasty with it, and you got yourself spark. And then for the rear, aside from those coilovers, I have a triangulated four link kit that I got off of eBay. I am not gonna run a parallel four with a panhard and I do not plan on running a Watts link. With the weight of the car and basically the fact that it's gonna be a daily, I have read a lot about the angles on them and how you have to have them set basically perfect. If not, they're gonna bind as soon as you have any sort of suspension travel, but I will figure that out when I go. Thankfully, they created a grinder and a cutoff wheel. So basically for today, all I'm gonna do is pull all of the original wiring out take out the brake booster, take out all of the existing fuel lines and all of the old vacuum lines that are still there, get everything all cleaned up just to give myself a nice clean empty canvas to work with. I'd love to pull the engine in trance to do this, but the cherry picker is still at my buddy Gennaro's house. We are still swapping that 2J into his Volvo in case you guys are interested in that. Stay tuned for that one. So I'm gonna have to do it with the engine in trance still in the car. But anyways, let's get this thing cleaned up.
So yesterday my camera kept overheating and I couldn't film the rest of the stuff that I had to do. But I got pretty much a good amount done. Managed to pull the wiring harness out. Started cutting away a little area where rust really, really, really started getting bad. Uh, I ordered some rust encapsulator. I'm hopefully gonna patch that up and fix it. I still need to get the brake booster out of the way. But until I go pick up my cherry picker, I'm basically stuck with the engine and trans where they are. So until I pull the engine and trans out, I figured I'd basically just work on the rear end. So this is not a GTS rear end, it is a SR5, but I will make it work. I found tons of write-ups on Club 4 AGE and old KE70 threads on how to basically convert an old SR5 over to disc brakes. And yeah, I'll never have the actual performance of a GTS, but at least it's a legitimate Corolla rear end. It should be able to hold up to whatever a stock 4 ag motor could do to it. So I figure for now, I might as well just start cutting all the old brackets off, get the old spring perches out, start prepping it for the four link. So let's see how that goes. got all the brackets on the rear end cut off. I'm gonna leave two of them and that's just cause they're gonna help me determine the angle of the lower four link. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it how it is. Next time I'm gonna come by, hit it with the grinder. I definitely wanna hit this thing with some degreaser and clean it up. You can't see in there, but it is crummy. It has gunk and buildup from God knows how many years ago. So let's be honest. Rear wheel drive swapping a car, it is not an easy task, if not everybody would do it. You're basically re-engineering a car that a company has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop. And you're trying to configure it to run a completely different way than what it was supposed to run. So it's not gonna be an easy job. And I don't expect it to be, and it hasn't been. And I keep thinking to myself like, oh, a few more things and I can knock it out of the park. It's not gonna be like that. But I am determined to get this thing done. So notes for what I gotta do in the next video. This front bar has to go, gotta cut it off, tube it, weld in some plates so in that way I can mount the front tension rods. I gotta reinforce this center beam by making the loop a little bit higher than where the drive shaft is gonna be before I start cutting out the rest. Then I gotta cut out all of that, excuse the mess, I gotta cut out all of that leading all the way to where the rear end is gonna sit. Then I gotta figure out this big ass hole that I left back here, how I'm gonna fill it, how the coilovers are gonna sit. Like I said, this is gonna be a stressful, fun, I don't know, project. But I want to get this one done before I finish the Celica because I have a bad habit of starting a project, jumping onto another one, and then going back to it, back and forth. So I'm going to try to stay determined to one car. If I do do anything for the Celica, it's just accumulate parts while I'm trying to do some stuff for this. But for right now, the main focus of this channel is going to be getting this Tercel going. I will be back to regular uploads. I am sorry for the time that I took away. I just needed some time out. But for now, I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Late. Thank you.